thanks, Sean, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk. Oh, we got one. Good. With, uh, today, um, like Sean said, we're talking about uh, ac being able to accurately predict our financial, our patient financial outcomes. But if you'll allow me to take a little bit of a, a tangent, I will come back there eventually. I want to go back to a, a moment uh, late last week when I was sitting on that plane. I'm not based in here. I'm not based in the Middle East. I'm actually based in the UK. So about three weeks ago, I got uh, given the opportunity to come and talk at Arab Health. Um, so last week I flew over there. It's, it's genuine, you can tell, because it's all overcast and rainy and zero degrees. Um, and I'm sitting there on that plane in order to come over here to Arab Health. Now, between, between that moment and three weeks before that, when I got the news that I was going to come over here and attend Arab Health, I needed to make a few, a bit of, do a bit of planning and make a few decisions. I needed to work out how I was going to get on that plane, what, what trips were available, how much that, those plane tickets were going to cost, what hotels were available, what, what, how much hotels were going to cost. So I had a sequence of events in order to know how much my journey over here was going to cost so I could convince my boss to pay for it. So uh, fortunately online for the travel industry, there's a loads of resources out there that allows us to go and do that. Um, I've just got, put the icons of a few uh, here. There's loads of travel um, uh, price comparison websites out there in the industry that enable us to go and make those decisions. Uh, my favourite one is this one here, Kayak. That's the one I like to use. I'm not sponsoring them. Or, they're not sponsored me or anything. But Kayak has a couple of features that I really like that enables me to go in and make those best decisions. Number one, it has a, some filters down on the left-hand side that enables me to go and say I only want flights landing at certain airports or leaving at different times or... Um, enables me to filter my results so it's not purely based on cost, it's also based on preference. No point me uh, landing in Dubai at a time that's inconvenient at, a, at an airport that's too far away. That's one thing, but the second thing is probably a little bit more poignant. Up in the top left-hand corner in Kayak, it has a little icon there. And that icon says, based on your search, based on your dates, we think now is a good time to buy a flight because we don't think it's going to get much cheaper or we think you should wait. We think that if you wait a little bit longer, these flight prices may go down. Well, how does it do that? That's pretty smart. And that allows me to, to make a better decision based, based on some information that it's giving me. Now, I'm no expert in the travel industry, but I can kind of take an educated guess that how it knows that is that it's able to know what's going to happen, predicting based on what's happened in the past. We've, got a, a, it's, we've gained a lot of data over how um, flights prices have changed, given ver various things over time, and it's, it's able to use that data to learn and able to, make, to predict exactly what's going to happen. Price comparison websites and things like this, probably I first got uh, um, exposed to them using the travel industry, but there are loads out there and there's loads that are available and they're for loads of different industries. You can now, if you want to buy a mobile phone, insurance for your pet or your whatever, there's usually a price comparison website or some resources online that enable you to go and do that. Here's an example of just some searches that I did for some local ones based on buying a new mobile phone. So there's loads of these out there, loads of these available. Now let's come off our tangent and come back to where we are today, which is healthcare. Let's say that I want to go and have a planned procedure that I want to go and pay for, and I want to know how much it's going to cost. Let's say I, need a, I think I need a knee replacement or a hip replacement, some dental work, some cosmetic surgery. How do I go and do that? Well, if you go out, out online, probably the first thing that you, you're going to see is you're, you're going to get a load of hospitals coming to you saying, we do that. Loads of hospitals are saying, we, we do that, and here's what we think it's going to cost. But those, those estimations are purely just what we think it's going to cost. 
There are also price comparison websites that are out there existing for the healthcare industry as well. But when you go out to a price comparison website for elective surgery, you don't get something that's easily filterable or a, an exact result. You get things like this. Click here to inquire or prices start at about 70,000 dirhams. Why is that? Well, as you guys probably know, healthcare isn't exactly cookie cutter like buying a flight or buying insurance. In order to go and get an accurate estimation, we need to know more about the patient. Because the, the procedure that they're coming in for may actually be different to the one that they really want. Or they could have higher risk categories due to age, demographics, height, weight, things like that. So <clears throat> current state today, if we need to get an accurate estimation of how much we think going, something is going to cost, we usually have to sit down with the patient, learn more about them, actually have a consultation with a clinician. <clears throat> so how do we get from where we are today to where we need to be, which from, from my example using price comparison websites, where it already knows some of that information and I can give a more accurate result? Well. We've got a couple of innovations that kind of help us do that. Number one is our big data. We've got, we've now, thanks <laughs> like, we, now over time, as electronic medical records have become more mature, as data collection in those electronic medical records have become better, better accepted, and also as we've got our revenue cycle and our financial systems that are clinically driven, we're able to tie together our financial outcomes and tie that with our financial outcomes in order to create that link. We have patients collecting a lot more data with their wearables, with their online portals, things like that. We need to be able to link that in as well. And then finally, of course, we have our artificial intelligence and our machine learning, being able to look back at that history of what's happened before in order to, in order to accurately predict how much is going to cost based on, based on what I know about what's happened in the past, as well as what I, what I know about the patient and creating that link. So we are at a real tipping point in, in regards to this type of thing. Um, we're not as mature as something like price comparison websites for, tra for the travel industry, but we have the data now and we have the technology. We, we, we're now going to start to create those links and we're going, to, we're going to see our big data combined with our artificial intelligence and our machine learning to create those predictable outcomes at the end and hopefully be able to expose those out to our, to our consumers. So we've talked a lot about the benefit for the consumers on this, but what about the facility? How are those predictable outcomes going to, pr going to help the facilities? Well, um, uh, well number one, um, if, we're, if we're spending less time generating those quotes, we're spending less resources from, a, from a, a clinical consultant, those expensive resources that could be better distributed doing actual clinical work rather than sitting down with a patient generating a quote. Um, predictable financial outcomes are going to help Price, better thing, uh, price up better um, procedures so we've got a better idea of how much they're going to cost up front. We can, we can use some of those marketing tools if price comparison websites evolve. That can help from marketing a, a, a facility uh, uh, on, on, online, their online presence. So this is, this is where we need to get to. Um, I, I think it could be a game changer in the business as this does evolve. And... Um, we hope to get there with partners like Cerner and, um, and help, help get there. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Are there any questions for Anthony? No? So I have one. Mm -hmm. So as we start to consumerize healthcare with these types of ideas, yeah, do you see uh, more private practices, uh, you know, getting involved in connecting not only doctors to patients, but maybe different institutions so we we see like medical tourism for example right. um and and those types of things does that grow in in this type of a a situation um or is it gr you know growing on i mean what are your thoughts uh, on that yeah i think i i think so i think that's that's a that's a good question and i think um the, i mean the the real answer is that we don't know yet i mean if you if you had a looked 
to use for that, that analogy of the travel website, if you had a look back five years ago, some of the things that those things are able to do now, you probably couldn't predict five years ago. Or you'd also struggle to, to predict the, the consumer uptake of that type of stuff as well. So um, I think that tipping point, as, as technology does evolve and as we ab are able to produce those more accurate financial kind of outcomes, the, the real question is going to be what, how are the users going to use that data? They, we're using data previously that we didn't think we would. We, we've got more data with wearable devices and things like that. If we, can, if we link those healthy portals with our clinical records, that's going to give more of the picture. Is that going to result in, in better, better accuracy and more predictability? And what is the uptake of the consumer going to be like for that? Um, I think based on what we've, what we've learned previously, seen as though healthcare is kind of immature in this type of thinking. Um, I think the uptake of other industries has been good, so therefore I think the um, I think I, I think the general acceptance that it's a bit more the future is here. So, um, but I think but I think we'll 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 have to get it out there and see and, and see what happens and then come up with those mature uses. Does, does that kind of answer your question? It does. It yeah. does. Thank you very much. No thank you, Anthony. Thank you.